British Prime Minister David Cameron announcing his up upcoming resignation just earlier as former London Mayor Boris Johnson saluted him. Johnson uh, made no mention of possibly replacing Cameron despite rumors to the contrary. This is financial markets plummeted. Uh, the road ahead still unclear uh, now that the EU has voted to leave, uh, the UK has voted to leave the EU. Uh, joining me now to discuss uh, Ted Bromond, uh, Rick, Rick Grinnell, and, and Christopher Bedford. Rick, I know that you uh, you were in a camp that uh, wanted them to vote leave. Uh, it was a, it was a strong victory for them. But I guess the question is now, what happens next? Look, we got 28 members, 20, 28 countries in the European Union, and what we've seen over the last, I would say, five, six, seven years is really a serious difference on immigration, economic policy. And so the, the, the difficulties that the EU has had has caused them to have the lowest common denominator of a policy. And that has never really benefited the British people because the British have always tried to make the policy tougher and they've always been on the losing end of that. So I think now what we're going to see is a stronger Britain. The well, Great Britain is going to be able to have a stronger border system and a stronger economic policy, certainly that, security. Okay, that's what I'm wondering, though, the economic policies. I mean, listen, they still have the universal health care. They still have, uh, you know, and Christopher, I'll go to you. On, on the, the, they still have a lot of things that uh, are, are sort of uh, anti-growth, if you will, that, that cost a lot of taxpayer money. I mean, are they really going to be able to sift shift into some really free willing, free market, low tax, low regulation society? No, not quite. They're definitely to the left of the United States, for example. But I think a lot of this financial craziness and the, and the, and the panic is going to end up looking like Y2K in a year. You're, uh, England is a net importer. They're a rich country. They bring in a lot from the Europe. And it, who in France and who in Germany, who in Portugal is going to look at their guys and say, hey, we're going to screw England on this trade deal and we're going to make you poor for it. Also, the financial markets in England, which bring in billions and billions of pounds, are going to lose a lot of red tape that they've gotten from Europe. And despite the European Union taking a lot of credit for these financial markets that you see in London, the reality is those boomed under uh, Margaret Thatcher, not because of the European Union or anything that they're taking credit for. So I think that England has the tools to do it, but they're certainly to the left of the U.S., as you pointed out. Yeah, although, Ted, uh, the folks in the, in the financial sector uh, overwhelmingly wanted to, to remain. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, and of course, the pound getting slugged, the pound getting pounded, no, well, some pun intended. Uh, yeah, uh, wh where does this leave their financial uh, sector? Because that is the... Really, that's one of the strongest areas for that nation. You know, it leaves the financial sector in a great position. The United Kingdom has had a world-leading financial sector, not simply since Margaret Thatcher. It's had a world-leading financial sector for over 300 years. The city has been around for an incredibly long time. And I think one effect of the Brexit vote is going to be that it's going to discourage the city from excessive focus on Europe. It's going to encourage them to look out even more than they already do into the wider world, into Africa, into India, into Asia, and to develop even more than they already have new markets to diversify away from an unhealthy reliance on Europe, which is prone to precisely the kind of euro crises that we've seen over the last few years. Rick, it was a tight vote, uh, uh, less than four percentage points. Those who wanted to, to, to remain. How, who, who's the right person to sort of navigate and to make sure that both sides are sort of on the same page, there's not a lot of resentment or bitterness, and they just kind of move forward as a united nation? You know, whatever way the vote went, it was going to be close. And so the other side, uh, the losing side, is going to be extremely disappointed. So the winning side is going to have to think about that, right? Because the, the, the losing side in this instance, they are truly losing their European uh, identity. And so that's a big deal for, I think, uh, patriotism, for those who looked more to Europe for their patriotism. I think what the uh, winning side is going to have to do is really emphasize growth quickly. Jobs, security. Uh, certainly we know that, that all of the banks wanted uh, the, the vote to remain, and that's because they wanted the status quo. Right. So this, to me, was a, a big vote on status quo or change. So the winners are going to have to show that change is good. Yeah, and of course, guys, uh, the 18 to 24-year-olds, 64% to 24% voted to remain. So I think near term, over the next few years, uh, the older folks there are going to have to show them why this was a great vote. Uh, you guys are fantastic. Thank you very much.